Back here on Sportsline here on News Channel 5 Plus, John Burton with our good buddy Virgil Herring, PGA teaching professional and director of golf at the Ensworth School. We're previewing the uh, PGA Championship coming up this weekend. Again, you can see third and uh, final round coverage all weekend long over on News Channel 5. And of course, everything gets underway tomorrow. We were talking about uh, some other golfers. Uh, Justin Thomas uh, had to withdraw from uh, this tournament. Um, unfortunately, had he been healthy going in, what, what kind of chance would he have had? Well, he's you know, he's one of those bombers who can putt well. Mm -hmm. So he has that that intangible piece that if it all comes down to, do you have it that week? Yeah. But if he's in that that place, he has the firepower of the length, the precision iron play. But he's a very good putter, and that's what allows he and Kepka and Tiger to be in that conversation all the time because there are people that hit it really long and really accurate, Dustin and Rory, but they're both noted for being substandard putters. Mm -hmm. You know, Justin Thomas, Kepka, and Tiger, Tiger obviously has, is great at everything. Right. <laughs> but but Kepka is not a, the greatest iron player, great short game, awesome putter. Justin Thomas, not the best iron player, but pretty good, long, and a great short game. Mm -hmm. So when it comes down to it, think about this, about 70 Three percent of the shots played in golf are played with your driver, your wedge, or your putter. If you're really good at those three clubs, you're really hard to beat. And those, th the, you know, those three guys are at the top of the pile when it comes to that. Obviously, here in Nashville, Verge in Middle Tennessee, we always like to keep an eye on Brant Snedeker. Uh, great guy. I've had a chance, uh, the pleasure of interviewing him a number of times. Just a great guy, and we've all been pulling for him to to win a major. Uh, do you think? There's any sand left in that hourglass that that Sneds could you know get hot one week and maybe win a Masters, maybe win a, a PGA or, or a major tournament? Y yes, there is. Now, now there's a lot of things that have to kind of fall into place. Okay, okay. The, it has to be a really good driving week for Brandt. Mm -hmm. He has to, and he's not super far off the tee, mm, right? No, he's not short either. Yeah, but he's definitely not Rory and DJ. Gotcha. Okay. So he has to drive it well because, in his famous words, I hit it short and crooked. Bad combination. <laughs> but it's, that, it's not all the way true. But under the gun, he tends to block his driver to the right. So if he can drive it well, and he, he has one intangible that nobody else has. And when his putter gets hot, it's repulsive. He makes more long putts than anybody. Mm -hmm. Think about this. Nobody has more sub-64 rounds on the PGA Tour in the last 15 years than Brandt. Wow. So he can go really low. I think the combination of this, he drives it good, has a better than average uh, approach shot week, mm -hmm. and shoots a 63 on Sunday. I'm not sure that he wins a major championship in the lead or in the final group. Right. But he has the ability to go smoking hot low. Shoot a 63 or a 64 on Sunday. Some people kind of fumble around under the pressure on the back nine mm -hmm. with a number on the board like Brent could post. He could. He's still going to be a threat because he's such a great putter. But I think that that's where it, it could go. And obviously, there's been hundreds of majors won on, on Sunday with a low round and people kind of fumble sure. coming in. Sure. That's and it definitely could happen, and it could happen for another five or six years. You know, Virgil, it's always fun to talk to you and talk golf with you because I see how much joy you get about talking about the sport of golf. And you really got into the sport uh, kind of unusually, right? Because most people are, you know, they start playing when they're four, five, six years old. You didn't. You got into golf a little bit later in life, and you've been able to parlay it into uh, a great broadcasting career, a great teaching career over mm -hmm. at Endsworth. I mean, this sport has really, really helped shape and maybe change your life, hasn't it? Oh my goodness! Well, golf is <laughs> golf is uh, a huge part of my life, and I I, I was a baseball player mm -hmm. and tore my rotator cuff twice, so I was going to be a pitcher until the gods said, "No, you're not." <laughs> I fell in love with golf because, you know, unlike other team sports, in that high school atmosphere, maybe if you're not from the right family or you don't have that right connection, sure. you don't get that that starting pitching position in the big game or mm -hmm. you don't get the bat fourth, you get the bat sixth. Right. And, I, and I'm not saying that wasn't an excuse, but I didn't like the fact that if I played great and we lost, I was supposed to feel terrible because we lost. And if we won and I played terrible, I wasn't supposed to feel down because I didn't play good. Right. I love golf because what you get is what you got. You know, If you played well, you feel good about it and you get to reap the rewards of it. If you didn't play well, 
well, there's nothing for you to celebrate. It's on you. It's Yeah, that's right. And I loved that piece. I also loved the fact that it was all up to me. And I didn't have to rely on really anything else. And when and then I when you get when you have a certain level of ability and then you find out that how much more of the game is mental. Right. And you get to that professional level and the, the, the game shifts to okay, everybody here in the pool has the same talent. Mm-hmm. Who has the mind for it? Mm-hmm. And certainly I didn't have the mind of of an elite player and I learned that while coaching Brant, that Brant's mind works differently than anybody's I've ever seen when it comes to a level of belief in himself is that's otherworldly. And think about this. He became the sixth best player in the world at one point. How much better is Tiger than Brant? Brant will tell you it's pretty substantial. Right. I can't imagine how much better Tiger is mentally than, than Brant because Brant was so much better mentally than anybody that I've ever seen. Hmm. But therein lies this weird place of... You have talent, but your ability to access the talent, your mind's ability to stop trying to be perfect, allow yourself to do what you've trained yourself to do, is the ultimate gift. To learn how to turn off the part of the brain that's hypercritical and just let it go and trust the fact that you've worked so hard for this moment, don't get in the way of it. And that's that's what I love to coach. I love the mental part of the game. Mm-hmm. Uh, obviously. You know, being on the Golf Channel and doing all the things that I get a chance to do, teaching the game, I get this moniker of being the golf swing guy. Right. But I really love, <laughs> I love teaching your brain how to trust that golf swing guy, mm-hmm. instead of relying on your golf swing. It's it's all up here, man. It's all up there. Yeah, it definitely is. And you know, one of the joys I get being a personal trainer is seeing. You know, a client come in and, and and being a little bit better at the end of the workout than they were when they first walked in and they start to get the confidence, hey, I can do these things. Yeah. I'm starting to see results. I would imagine it's the same for you teaching people the game of golf. Yes. I mean, first of all, the vast majority of people that I teach are either junior golfers trying to be Tiger. Right. <laughs> or I'm just teaching people who want to enjoy the game. Right. And enjoying the game is not hard. Playing on TV is hard, right. okay? <laughs> but to be able to help somebody enjoy a game that they love, it's hard. I'm not saying golf's not hard, because golf is hard. But to be able to enjoy it, there's a level of satisfaction that comes out of playing a difficult game well. Yeah. You know? So I love to help people have those moments. Now, obviously, in the search of those moments come multiple duffs and bad <laughs> shots and what have you. But nevertheless... That's kind of like life. Golf's one of the coolest platforms to learn the lessons of life while playing a game outdoors and in a beautiful surroundings. Right. And golf has definitely brought me more than maybe I deserve because I love to help people. I love to coach the game. I love to help kids reach dreams and aspirations. But at the end of the day, we're all searching for a greater common good. Mm-hmm. And if golf's the vehicle that allows you to have it once a week for four hours, and so be it. That's very well said. Now, you didn't start playing till you were a teenager, correct? That's right. When I tore my rotator cuff the first time, I was I was 14. That's when I started playing. Hmm. And I started playing right-handed. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't, because I was told that golf wasn't played left-handed. And it's kind of funny. My, my dad told me that the, you only play golf right-handed. And then when my, when my dad's dad passed away, we were cleaning out the garage. And sure enough, my grandfather's clubs were left-handed. And I'm like, oh, my God. And that's how I started playing left-handed. Wow. I was playing with a, a set of 1937 Wilson golf clubs that were so old. It was a little with leather. With a wooden shaft? Or? You know, they were steel but rusted and the leather. <laughs> they were leather grips that were falling off. But that's me. I was I batted left-handed, so swinging left-handed was sure. way more natural to me. And I immediately, like my first round of golf left-handed was like 35 shots lower than my best round right-handed. Wow. So that's when like that that captured me. Like the the level of precision that golf required was like pitching to me. Mm-hmm. And pitchers and golfers kind of go hand in hand. And I hit it it's off with the It's putting the ball where you want it to go. That's right. It's visualizing it. That you know, right? That's it's right. Visualizing. I want the ball to go here when it's all said and done. Same as pitching, right? That's right. I want to paint the outside corner, or I want to, you know, cut in on his hands with a fastball. I want it to be right there, and it's just, you know, getting the mind, getting the ball to do what your mind wants it to do, right? That's right. I think one of the things I find fascinating to me is the fact that when I pitched, I never thought about how to do it. 
I just did it. And I think that there are certain people that have that gift with the golf with a golf club in their hand. That like you ask like you get these people that give you and like so like how do you do that? And they're like, well, I just kind of sit up there and, and uh, swing. <laughs> like, and that's unfortunately like yeah. you're hoping for something. You're trying to glean some kind of like right. impressive information, and they just give you like nothing. You know what's similar to that? I you know I was watching a major league baseball game one night and. Eduardo Perez, who played in the, in the majors for a long time, um, you know, he's doing commentary, and they asked him about, like, uh, Manny Ramirez, you know, one of the great right-handed hitters of all time, probably yeah. should be in the Hall of Fame, you know, yeah. whatever, he's got other stuff to deal with, but, you know, he's, he said, I would go up to him and say, Manny, what makes you such a great hitter? Why are you such a great hitter? You know, what, what do you do? And Manny just told me, he kind of imitated him. He's like, I just find a good piece to hit and I drive it, Poppy. That's all you got to do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And that's kind of, but that's what the great ones do. They yeah. just do it. That's right. They don't know how they do it. Uh, they so just I, do it. And I think what happens is there are certain people that begin to play the game and their technique is not good, mm -hmm. but they're athlete, athletic enough to make enough good shots go that they get kind of addicted to the, the, the game of golf. Yeah. And then as soon as they want to become better, they they fall in love with the information and like you can't play golf being technical right. and i just think one of all the things that i wish that i had was when i stood on the hill pitching i never thought about how to throw the pitch i just did when i get up over the golf ball I feel like I got the like a Wikipedia open. I got like I'm scrolling this thing. I went this big what, screen oh, just yeah, comes yeah, up and right. you're like, I got all these thoughts, pie graphs and charts and percentages. Yeah. And so yeah. at the end of the day, it's funny now. Like I I play my best golf when the wind's blowing hard mm -hmm. because that kind of scraps like the idea of playing perfect golf. Now I'm just trying to. Play, let the wind kind right. of maneuver Negotiate my ball. The it, it's so yeah. so strange. Like it, it takes. A difficult conditions to put my brain in a place where I'm not trying to be perfect because when it's just 85 and no wind I spend a whole all my time trying to be perfect which is kind of funny yeah no such thing as a perfect round of golf right nobody's ever shot an 18 nope. I guess maybe Kim Jong-un yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah <laughs> well, forward Virgil Herring when we come back <laughs> looking for a tip to help your golf game well maybe Virgil can help give us a call we're back after this